Greetings YouTube fans. This video is to introduce my new Access SQL Server online seminar. If you've ever wanted to make your Access Datable usable over the internet, this seminar is for you. I'll show you how to set up an online SQL Server, export your tables and then relink to them, get data using pass-through queries, secure your database, and even build a simple web interface so anyone can view your data using nothing more than a web browser. What follows is the first lesson to this seminar and will give you complete information on everything that's covered. Welcome to the Microsoft Access SQL Server Online Seminar brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I am your instructor, Richard Rost. This seminar will teach you how to connect multiple users to an online SQL Server database using Microsoft Access or a web browser as your front end. We will learn how to set up web and SQL Server hosting at winhost.com. We'll connect Microsoft Access to the SQL Server. We'll install the SQL Server Management Studio, which is free from Microsoft, to maintain our server. We'll see how to link our tables to the server. We'll learn how to get data from the server using pass-through queries, which allows the server to do most of the work before sending the data down to Access. We will learn how to relink our tables using VBA code. We'll see how to connect directly to tables using ADO record sets. We'll learn how to secure the database, including locking down the front end and disabling the access bypass key so people can't get into your code. We'll learn how to hide access objects like our tables and queries, anything you don't want your end users seeing. We'll learn how to edit the back-end tables, so once you've exported a table from Access up to SQL Server, you can make changes. And finally, we'll learn how to display data on the web using a simple web browser and ASP, Active Server Pages, to connect to our database. This is a developer-level seminar. I strongly recommend that you've taken my beginner and expert classes and up to developer level 1 so you know the basics of VBA. I also recommend you take Developer 16 if you want to learn the basics of record sets before starting this class, although that's not a firm requirement. You don't have to do record set programming to benefit from today's seminar. At the bare minimum, if you haven't taken Developer 1, watch my free Access VBA intro class. There's a link right there. I'll put it down in the links section below. To use Access and SQL Server, I strongly recommend also that you have taken my SQL language seminars. I've got three different seminars that cover the basics of the SQL language. How to do select queries, modifying data, and so on. Again, this isn't required, but you'll get more out of this class if you already know SQL. Another recommendation is to take my security seminar. I will show you today how to secure your database and lock it down to prevent unauthorized use. However, I'm going to show you with a simple one database password. Anyone who knows the password can get into the database. If you want to set up user level security with different users and groups and permissions, I cover that in my Access Security Seminar. I will be using the equivalent of Access 2019. I have a Microsoft 365 subscription. However, the techniques I'm going to show in today's class should work for pretty much every version of Access going back to about 2007. If you have any questions regarding the material covered in today's class, just scroll down to the bottom of the page and post them there. Be sure to also take a minute to read through any other questions that have been posted as your question may have already been answered. Also make sure you click on the subscribe button to get notified if any other questions and comments are posted for this class, including updates. Sometimes I post update videos. And of course, be sure to stop by my access forum if you have any other access related questions. Now let's take a closer look at exactly what's covered in today's seminar. In lesson one, we're going to discuss why you would want to connect your Access database to an online SQL server. We'll talk about the pros and cons. Then we'll discuss what you need to get started and what they will need to connect to your database. In lesson two, we're going to set up an account at winhost.com. We'll talk about setting up a new domain name or transfer an existing one if you have one already. We'll see how to use the WinHost Site Control Panel. We'll create our first online SQL Server database, and I'll show you how to get the connection string. In Lesson 3, we are going to connect our Access Database to SQL Server. 
We're going to set up the SQL Server Management Studio. We're going to set up an ODBC data source file to connect to SQL Server. Then we're going to export the customer T up to the server, delete it from the access database, and then link to it up on the server. Lesson four is all about properly querying data on the server. We're going to link our remaining tables. We're going to talk about the differences between Access SQL and Transact SQL, which is what SQL Server uses. We're going to learn about pass-through queries and why they're important for downloading the right amount of data from the server. We're going to learn about the query defs collection and how to create a query on the fly using VBA. And we'll learn how to store our connect string in tempvars. In lesson five, we're going to see how to relink our tables in VBA code using something called a table def. So we'll learn about the table defs collection. Then we'll learn about ADO record sets, which are very similar to DAO record sets for those of you who've taken my developer classes. I'll show you how to change the database password on the server. Then we'll see how you can avoid a little quirk with the database not connecting to the tables right. All you have to do is learn how to read a value or ping a pass-through query when the database loads. So that's a cool little trick we'll learn in this lesson. In lesson six, we're going to start talking about security for your database. We're going to lock down the database. We're going to set up an admin menu with two buttons on it, lock database and unlock database. The lock database turns off all the features you don't want your end user having, the navigation pane and so on. Plus, we'll see how to disable the bypass key so they can't hold down the shift key to get into your database and see the navigation pane. Then we'll make an ACCDE file to encrypt it and lock it up. Okay, part two of security. We're going to see how to hide your linked tables and pass-through queries to make it harder for someone to import them into a different database. Then we're going to talk about a read-only problem with linked tables. So I'll show you how to create indexes in each of those tables so you can connect to them on the SQL server and have a read-write access. Then we're going to create and test a distribution copy on a second PC. In lesson eight, we're going to learn how to query data directly in SSMS, the SQL Management Studio. I'll show you how to alter your tables. If you need to create new tables, it's best to create them in Access and publish them up like we did before, but you're going to want to make changes to your existing tables without having to re-upload them. So I'll show you how to make alterations to your tables on the server using either SQL or the editor in SSMS. Then, of course, you'll have to relink your changes, relink for the table changes. Then we'll talk about some backup options, how to manually backup your database, and I'll show you about their automated nightly backup at WinHost. In lesson nine, we're going to see how to connect to our SQL server data on the web using ASP directly from our website. I'm going to talk about the Edit Plus web editor, but you can use whatever web editor you're comfortable with, why we are going to use ASP. We'll create our first ASP page, default.asp. We'll connect to SQL using ADO. We'll display a customer list from our customer table. We'll select a specific customer using a query string. I'll teach you about that. And we'll display the customer details that the user clicks on. In lesson 10, we're going to talk about security one more time. We're going to talk about how Access caches passwords for your connections to the server and that you don't have to store them in your queries once you've actually reestablished that connection. And then we'll talk one more time about the benefits of pass-through queries.